All right, so good morning, everybody. My name is Jesse, and I am with Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. If you're joining us for the first time today, and I know many of you are joining us for the first time today, we are all about bringing conservation, adventure, and science into classrooms around the world through free, live, interactive broadcasts. I know for many of you, it's your first few weeks back to the classroom. Students, welcome back to class. It is so nice to have you guys back, and it is so nice that you guys are joining us so early on in the school year. So thank you so much for that. Today marks the beginning of Science Literacy Week, Canada's largest science festival. Um, and so, oh, I'll bring up a different banner for that one. Uh, Canada Science Literacy Week begins today. And to celebrate that, the Canadian Association of Science Centers is joining us for this epic Week of Wonder Festival. So Science Centers, many of you might have had the chance to visit Science Centers in your life. They are the chief places where we go to learn about the world and cosmos around us. Most of them are reopening again across Canada, and so I hope you all get the chance to go visit in person soon. Till that day, I wanted to highlight this amazing festival, bring you guys in, showcase some of the amazing work and education programs that they've got going on coast to coast. So without further ado, we are joined for our first program to kick off this epic week with the Ontario Science Centre. Now I grew up in Toronto as a boy and I had the chance to visit the Ontario Science Centre dozens of times. It's one of my favourite places, inspired me so much as a kid, helped lead me to this career that I have today. So I hope you guys are as excited as I am by the end of today's broadcast. And for today, we are going to join Simon, who is as enthusiastic as I am, which is hard to pull off, for What's Your Inquiry, a new program where we're going to learn about the scientific method. We're going to do some fun experiments together. I hope you guys are all ready to be really interactive with us. And without further ado, let's get to it and dive in. Simon, thanks so much for joining us today, man. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to the Science Center. As uh, Jesse said, thank you, Jesse, for, uh, for intro uh, the introduction. My name is Simon. I'm one of the science educators here at the Ontario Science Center. And welcome to What's Your Inquiry? And I know most of you are thinking, what do you mean, what's your inquiry? That is a process, and we're going to be asking questions. We're going to be making, we're going to be making predictions. We are going to be experimenting, and I want your input today on some of the experiments that we do here at the Ontario Science Center. We're gonna change things up, we're gonna ask some questions, and then hopefully at the end of it, we'll get some answers. But you know what? If anything, if it fails, we also, we also learn from these experiments too. Now, before we begin, uh, I'd like to acknowledge the land that we're on. Uh, sorry, just let me move my slide for the show. Uh, the Ontario Science Center acknowledges that we are on the traditional territories of many nations including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Chippewa, and, the, uh, and, other, and other Anishinaabek nations, the Haudenosaunee and Wendat people, and is now home to many diverse First Nation, Inuit, and Métis people. We are settlers on Turtle Island, and in the spirit of truth and reconciliation, uh, we commit to respect, listen, learn, and support Indigenous peoples, with whom we share this land and who have cared for this land since time immemorial. Now, we are going to start this program, and you know what, we, I hope you're pumped up because I'm super pumped up to do some fun science experiments. Now, I have one really easy science experiment right now. It involves a balloon. And now, if you, if you have trouble with balloons popping, just, it's okay, just you can cover your ears a little bit, but there will be some balloon popping throughout this demonstration. So I'm going to put on some, uh, some protective ear equipment. And I have my balloon just right over here. So we're going to first start off with our wonderful red balloon. Uh, and I have some nails. So look at this one right over here. I have this nail over here. Now, I want you to predict at home. What do you think would happen if I just put my nail right over here? So make a prediction. You can write it down. If you're in class, you can tell your, your teacher. Or if you have your friend beside you, you can tell your friend what your predictions are. Now, this one is a pretty simple one. I have one nail. I have one balloon. Maybe I'll move over to this side right over here. Let's do a quick test, and hopefully you can hear it. So I have this balloon right over here. I'm going to put it right down, and whoa! Okay. That was pretty loud. Now, what we want to do today is we want to make sure that we keep some of these balloons around because I'm, I'm missing out on some balloons right now. I've been experimenting all day. I need your help today to help me out with experimenting with some of these balloons. So what we're going to do is we are going to do some, we're going to change this experiment a little bit. Are you ready to change this experiment? Oh, so someone, someone said it will pop. Yes, absolutely. That is absolutely correct. So what can we change and what did you notice and what do you wonder 
about this. So I want you to think about these questions. If you are in class, you can type it in the chat. How can we make sure that these balloons don't all pop? What can we do? What can we add? And maybe in, the, in between, as you're thinking about this, I'll do another experiment, okay? So this next experiment, I'm going to use a balloon, but I'm going to add some more nails. So I'm going to put five nails right over here. I'm going to add five nails to this. So I'm going to change the experiment a little bit. I'm going to change it by adding some more nails. So I'm going to add this up right now. I'm going to put this on my board right over here on the side. And then, I'll, of course, I need another balloon. Where's my balloons? Okay, I have another balloon just right over here. I have a green balloon this time. Now, some of you are thinking, what can I do? What can I do to keep these balloons from popping with the nails underneath it? Ah, so I'm adding more nails here. So I'm going to let everyone, I'm going to show everyone over here. So I'm just going to gently put it on top. Oh, already. Oh, what? oh, you know what, Miss Wayne's class, grade four class, you think lightly placing it on it. So I lightly place it on this one. So you know what, what's another thing? Can we test this out? What can we do to test this? What do you think? We, we need to test this experiment. Should we maybe put some, some load on top of our, uh, our balloon? See if it lasts? I think we should, Simon. I think that sounds like a great idea. And people in the yeah, chat, feel free to throw in your ideas. We want to hear what you guys think in the, in the chat. Add 20 nails, Miss Carter's class. <laughs> We're just upping the nails. This is fun. <laughs> add 20 nails? You know what? Um, you know what? We'll, we'll do the five for now, and then we'll <laughs> add some more afterwards. Okay, so we'll start with the five right now. All right, so I'm going to put a load on top. So this is the load that I'm putting on. It's just a, a little piece of wood. I'm going to put it on top right now. Oh! Oh, oh my goodness, Whew. every single time, every single time. So it could not withstand just a load of a, a piece of wood. That's, that's not very good. So uh, I think I heard from, from Jesse, there was one class that, that said 20 nails. Is that 20 correct? nails, 20 yeah, nails? 20 nails. They're Miss Carter's class. They're really excited. <laughs> okay, you know what? That's a very good one because you know what? We are going to try that right over here. So this is a little bit more than 20 nails. Just a tad more than 20 nails. And uh, I'm going to need another balloon. Yes, I'm going to need another balloon here. Let me just grab another big balloon. Where's my other big balloon? Oh, I got a pink one right over here. All right. So I'm going to pump up the balloon. So just, just to show everyone, this is a balloon. And I am filling it with air. There's no tricks here at all. So my class that said, add 20 nails or add more nails. Let's try adding some more nails with this balloon. Okay, so you can hear it. It's a balloon. Uh, so some of you don't make your predictions right now. Do you think it's going to pop? Yes or no? Uh, mm -hmm. So make your predictions. Remember, you can tell your teacher if you're uh, not joining us uh, in the chat. So you can tell everyone, uh, your teacher or maybe your friends beside you. I am going to lightly, just like all my friends before, the procedure, I'm going to lightly place it on top. Very, very lightly. Oh, there we go. Nice and lightly. I'm going to put a piece of wood right on top, okay? So are you ready, everyone? All right. I hope you're all ready. We're ready. Okay, I'm going to put a piece of wood on top, okay? <gasps> all right. Okay. Uh, the wood is on top. It didn't pop this time. We did it. We did it. You all helped me out there. We all absolutely did it. So we are going to change this experiment a little bit more. So remember, I, I put a piece of wood on there. Do you think that's enough load? What do you think? Do you think there's enough load there? Mm. Mm. Apply pressure. Mr. McDonald's class, they think that you it won't pop unless you apply more pressure. So maybe you've got to okay. push on top of the wood, okay? Any of our live classes, Miss Pino, Miss Way, what do you guys think? Should we add more pressure? Should we not add more pressure? Yes, yes. add more pressure! Yes. 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 You know what? This, this is a really good thing because we are brainstorming on ways that we can change this experiment. We can either uh, add more pressure, we can uh, add some more nails, we can change the balloon size, but you picked it, add more pressure, which means, you know what, it's time for me to pull out my brick. Yes, I am going to put a brick on top of this. Are you all ready for this? Okay, let's see. All right, so I'm going to switch over to this camera. I'm going to put the brick on top. Everyone sees the brick on top? All right, so the brick's on top, right down the center. Should we put more? Oh, my goodness. 
That's I don't know. Cool. What do we think, Mr. Floaty Slash? We put more on top. Yeah. Simon more bricks. More bricks. Okay. So I have another one right over here. Let's add this one in. Whoa. Mm. Okay. So we added quite a bit. So there's two bricks on there right now. Oh. Oh. I don't know if you saw that, but you might have heard it. It <laughs> collapsed. That's what science is all about. Unexpected exactly. So as you can see, we took one experiment. What would happen to the balloon with one nail? And then you changed one thing. You changed one variable by adding more, more nails. So we went to five, and then we went to 20. Should we add more nails? What do you think? What should we do? Should we add more weight? Should we add more nails? Now, Pino's in the bank. Yes, yes, there's always more, Simon. More nails, more bricks, all of it. Come on, man. So <laughs> it's, it's adding more. We're always upping the ante. So I'm going to just share my screen just a second. Uh, let me just share it right over here. Oh, sorry. Monster, let me try sharing the screen once again. So, in, oh, okay, there we go. So in this process, we changed a, a few things to prevent the balloon from popping. We changed the amount of nails. And then what do you think? To measure, we have to make something to measure. So we have to measure something. Let me see if I can find my mouse again. There we go. So to measure, what can we measure in our experiments? We can add more bricks to our experiment, so the amount of load, so we can measure the amount of load there. And then we can make something called a testable question. So the testable question here is, if I add more nails, the balloon would survive under a large load. And everyone, you just created a new experiment just by asking these questions, just by making uh, predictions, just by asking questions and changing something called a variable by changing the amount of nails there are. And then we have to observe, we have to see what's, what we can observe. So we can observe how much load goes onto our bed of nails. So everyone, uh, that's, as I did say a bed of nails. So when I said a bed of nails and we're gonna add more nails, I got something right behind me and it is a actual bed. <laughs> Of nails. So I have a bed right over here, and that bed is all of these same nails that we first started off with before. Uh, now, for this one, I'm not going to just put the balloon on there, but I am going to lay on top of it. No, what do you think? Do you think, uh, do you think that burst, like pop like a balloon? I hope not. It would make for really terrifying footage. <laughs> I know, that'd be funny. So what, for everyone right now, I'm going to pop onto the bed of nails. So I'm going to put my, I'm going to put a little pillow at the end because I want to put my head onto the nails. So there it is right over here. And I'm going to just crawl onto, on my back, right over here like this. Oh, on all fours. Are you ready, everyone? Uh, we're ready. Oh, oh. nice, Simon. Ah, oh, that's me. It's, it's Jesse. It's quite comfortable. Wonderful. I must say, I, can, I might be able to fall asleep here today. No, I'm kidding. So that is the bed of nails. Now, what happened is that when we added more nails to our, our bed, we actually reduced the amount of pressure. So we had more surface area, less pressure. So just like the one nail and the five nails right over here, this one has more pressure and this one has less because there's a bigger surface area. And that is why I did not pop when I laid onto this big bed of nails. And you know what, if I were to lay onto one of these or maybe two of these, that wouldn't be a very good idea at all. So that is really, really cool because we changed a bunch of these experiments. And you know what, we're gonna change another experiment today. Are you ready for a different experiment? I'm right. ready for a different Let's experiment. See. Let's do it, man. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's go. Let's keep going. All right. Let me just see if I can pull up my PowerPoint slide. There we go. All right. Okay. A little bit of technical difficulties. Give me one second. It's half the fun, honestly. Yes, it is. It is half the fun to be able to 
Yeah. Not point your uh, your mouse on to on your page, isn't it? On a plus note, the kids love the bed of nails. I got a lot of people really inspired about bed of nails. Maybe don't try it at home. Don't leave and go. Yes, home please don't try this at home. Don't try this at home. But when you're in train hands like Simon's, it's pretty cool. And you can head to the Ontario Science Center and see things like this in action, in person now, if you're in the general Toronto area, which is pretty exciting. This is a lot of fun. Exactly. So I'm going to share my screen once again. And I just want to show you this. All right. Oh, hopefully. Oh, what happened? No, nothing. You got it up for us. Yeah, yeah you're good. Oh, there we go. All right. So what do you notice here, students? I just want you to observe. What do you notice here? What is happening? What is this? I want you to type in all the descriptive words that you have uh, or tell your students or tell your teacher or tell your friends around you. I want you to think about what is going on. Ooh, is it steam? Mm -hmm. Oh, steam. All right. I can bring in some classes too. So Miss Miss Pino's class, unmute your mic. What do you guys think's going on here? Why? What do you think's going on there? What do we think? Hmm. Got some good things in the chat. No it's longer steam. Why? Steam. Why? All right. No okay. one you guys supposed to unmute you. Oh, you can't hear me. Actually, I think it's yeah. Yeah. Tell us, Simon. Very good. So there is, it says some, some of the teach, uh, some of the friends saying that the water's boiling. It's making steam. So yeah, it is boiling, but there's no fire underneath it. So what we have here is what we call liquid nitrogen. Yes, Miss uh, Miss Pino's class, you are absolutely right. This is liquid nitrogen. And what we're going to do with liquid nitrogen today is we're going to do some observations, and we are also going to test things out too. So we're going to test things out with liquid nitrogen. But I have a question for you: uh, What what takes up more space? What do you think? Is it a liquid nitrogen or gas? So thinking about space all around us, I want you to think about what takes up more space. Is it the liquid or the gas? I have a little animation there just to help you out a little bit. So you can tell the teacher, you can raise your hand, you can put your finger saying A is a liquid nitrogen or B is gas. Oh, sorry, a gas is supposed to be B there. <laughs> B or A. Uh, which one do you think? Let's see. I'm going to check. Right. Mr. Ms. Gerdari, Ms. Lafay, do you guys have thoughts? I know you joined us a little bit after. What do we think? Gas or liquid takes up more space? Hmm. Do you want to yell out? You can. Gas, we think. Oh, sorry. I am streaming through my class. That, that's okay. That's all good, guys. Okay. How about Mr. Fleming's class? Gas or liquid? More room. So you know what? There's a, almost like a half and half there. That's absolutely great because this is a great question because when you're thinking about what we're looking at before with the with the liquid, you can see that there's a lot of gas around. So gas actually takes up a lot of space around us. And if you look at your room around you, there's gas all around us. So what we're going to do next is I'm going to actually try to trap this gas. And I'm going to trap this liquid nitrogen today. So I want you to all think about ways that we can maybe trap this liquid nitrogen gas. We want to trap the gas of the, uh, the nitrogen. So what do you think we should do to trap this nitrogen? So I have some little brainstorming hints right over here, and then I'm gonna go pour out my liquid nitrogen in just a moment. So I want you to think about it, think about what you want to change today, make your predictions, and then we're gonna we're gonna get started, all right? So, uh, oh, just put a lid put a on, lid top, on top. top. Okay, that's a good one. All right, put a lid on top, uh, Ms. so it can, yeah. So I'll, can bring in Ms. Ways class. I'll bring in our class in New Brunswick. Ms. Ways group, what do you guys think? How are we gonna trap that gas? How do you think? Zachary? Um, use a balloon like how you get them out of carnival. So with like a balloon. balloon. Yeah, balloon. make it. Yeah, that's like balloon. Oh, yeah. that's wonderful. Yeah. So I'm going to show you how much nitrogen, uh, liquid nitrogen I'm going to put in. And then I'm going to show you how much gas we get out of it. Okay. So, all right. So some of you say balloon. That is absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to try the balloon. And just give me one second. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to move my head and nails back all the way to the end. I'm going to get my safety equipment on. Of course, you have to be safe in, uh, in working with a liquid nitrogen. So I have my thing right over here. Perfect. So I'm going to use the cryo gloves on the side. 
Cryo gloves are a great scientific term, by the way. I like that very much. Oh, yes. So these gloves are for when you're dealing with things that are really, really, really cold. All right. So I'm going to move right over here. And everyone can see I have a large doer filled with liquid nitrogen. So I'm going to pour it into this beaker over here. And let's take a quick look and see. And I have a little funnel, so I don't have to spill it all over the place, OK? So I'm going to pour it right into the speaker. Right over here. Very cool, Simon. Whoa, so I have some liquid nitrogen right over here. You can see it. It's boiling right now, so you can see it boiling all over. So what's happening is the temperature outside is really, really warm. And this liquid nitrogen is minus 193 degrees, not 196 degrees Celsius, minus 196 degrees Celsius. Uh, and then look at that right there. So that is the gas. So I'm gonna pour this into a giant funnel, all right? Our giant tube right this, all right, and we're going to try to trap it. So my friends that said balloon on top, we're going to try a big balloon. Let's go with a big red balloon again. So just to let you know how much liquid nitrogen we have, I'm going to pour it back into this different beaker so that you can see how much liquid nitrogen. I'm going to pour a little bit, not too much, just this much into this giant funnel, or this giant uh, cylinder, um, and I'm going to cover it with a balloon. And then the environment is going to heat up that liquid nitrogen, turn it into a gas, and we should have all of that. Cool. <laughs> All that gas nitrogen left behind. Look at that right over here. That is a fantastic way. So everyone, you did a fantastic job to help me figure out a way to trap this gas using this balloon right over here. We can maybe make the process a little faster. How about you make the process faster? Remember, I'm heating it up with the environment. What do you think we should do if we wanted to make it faster? Yeah. What would you do? All right, well, let's bring, let's bring in some folks. Uh, Miss Bino's class, unmute your mic. What do you guys think? We wanted to make it faster. We want to get it nice and hot. Hmm, hmm, thinking caps on. What, what do we think? Put it on a heater. Put it on a heater? I like that. That's a really good one. So put it on a heater. So remember how much liquid nitrogen did I have? Did I have a lot of liquid nitrogen in there? No, not really. And look at how big. This balloon is. This balloon is massive. So what takes up more space, liquid or gas? It is definitely gas. So I'm gonna open this up. And everyone, are you ready? Three, two, one. There you go. So we trapped some nitrogen in there. That was a fantastic experiment. Is there any other way that you would trap or we would, uh, trap the gas of nitrogen? What do you think? Anyone else have any ideas that we the ways that we can trap this? Nitrogen. Mm -hmm. hey, yeah, Mr. Fleming's class. What do you think? We had balloons already. How else are we gonna trap it? Put your hand in it. Put your hand in it. I don't know. Oh, I don't think I want to do that. Remember, it's minus 196 degrees Celsius. That is super, super cold. Don't think we'll do it. We it. <laughs> what are we being silly about it now? I don't know. So, I mean, you could put your hand in. I think it, that's about as cold as it was hot over the summer here in Ontario. So. You might not want to do that. No other thoughts on YouTube. Tell us, what, what should we do? A box, maybe? Hmm. A, a box is a really good one. I have actually a solution here. Ooh. Um, it's a bubble solution. So it's a dish It's dish soap with glycerin and water. You can find this on our Science Center's website uh, afterwards. And uh, this is an activity that you can definitely do in class. And you can even change the glycerin and water and soap ratio to do your own bubble experiment too. So I'm gonna to add a little bit of water into my uh, container here. And then we're gonna see if we can trap some using bubbles. So I've got some hot water here. So just like my friend said before, heat it up. So I have hot water right over here. I'm gonna heat up the liquid nitrogen. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna put a little layer of bubble on top. So 
maybe we'll see what happens when we trap that bubble. Everyone, you're doing a really good job at doing some inquiry here. We are going to fill this container up once again with some liquid nitrogen. By the way, Simon, while you're doing that, Miss Pfeiffer's class on YouTube said bubbles, which I'm like, way to go, guys. That's pretty awesome. Someone thought bubbles, too. I didn't think bubbles. I'm impressed. Yeah, bubbles would be amazing. So, everyone, I am going to pour this in, and then we're going to try to make a bubble with the liquid nitrogen. So, we're going to try to make the bubble. Remember, the liquid nitrogen is turning from liquid into gas. It's evaporating extremely quickly because of the environment. Now it's going to happen even faster when I pour it into something that's warm. Watch. All right, that's happening really, really quickly. I'm going to take my gloves off really quickly and see if we can get a... Sometimes, sometimes it doesn't work, but let's see. Oh, let's see. Let's see if we can get it. Let's see if we can get it. Oh, we almost had it. We almost had it. You're like a wizard, Simon. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I know. There we go. We have a nice layer of bubble on top. <laughs> and we're trapping that gas nitrogen. Now, if anyone is curious about what nitrogen tastes like, you can do it. Everyone take a deep breath and go, mmm, nitrogen does taste pretty good. If nitrogen is inside of our atmosphere, the majority of uh, the, uh, the gas inside of our atmosphere is mainly made out of nitrogen. So we have a lot of nitrogen all around us. And you can take a look and see, there's our wonderful, oh, oh. <laughs> that was so cool. Balloon of nitrogen. So everyone, that is fantastic. Thank you very much for making those changes to our experiment. And you know what? We can learn a lot from that. We can measure how much nitrogen there was. Remember the big size of the balloon. There's a lot to do when you're experimenting. Now, we're going to move on into uh, another part of our program because now it's your turn to experiment yourself. So you are going to do some experimenting in class, and I'm going to show you how to do this experiment. And then what we're going to do is you're going to ask some questions, and then you're going to change the experiment, like how I changed all my experiments that I had here today. So is everyone ready to experiment? Everyone, are we, are we ready, guys? Are we ready to experiment? After all this bed of nails and liquid nitrogen, working with dangerous materials, my heart rate, I don't know if you, you're not in the room with me right now, but it is bumping. You can, it, it, maybe you can hear it. Do you want to hear my heart? I want to hear your heart, Simon. I'm ready. Want to hear my heart? Yeah, I know I have a special speaker right over here. Ah, I am a little, also a little nervous because of all my friends here and I'm on, on camera and stuff. So my heart rate might be a little high right now. So I'm going to turn this on and I have this thing right over here. This is similar to what they have at the doctor's office called a stethoscope. So some of you might have uh, heard or seen or even touched a stethoscope also before, but this is connected to this speaker right over here. So let's listen for my heart rate. <laughs> wow, it's fast. It's kind of like I'm running a marathon, isn't it? It's because of all the dangerous material and equipment I was using. My heart rate's going up also. So what we're going to do with that is we're going to do an experiment using your own heart rate. Uh, but before we experiment, I want to show you that, yes, the, uh, that's, uh, the heart is actually a really, really interesting muscle and an organ inside your body. I don't have a human heart with me, but I do have a cow's heart with me. And I'll show you some of the little places that the blood actually travels. And the reason why we hear that dump, 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 that you heard just before. So everyone, I have here, I know we dissected it also so that you can see different parts of it. This is the cow's heart. It's about the size of my head, isn't it? So if you take a look right over here, there's a little hole. We have that hole there, it's called a ventricle. And this ventricle region is where it fills up with blood. So when you do a pump, the heart fills up with the blood inside your body. And it's either 
oxygenating it, so adding oxygen, or taking the bad uh, uh, or taking the oxygen that is of uh, the blood without the oxygen out of your system too. So it goes in of your system and then out of your system. I have the ventricle opened, and then there's something called the atrium that is right on top, right over here. You can see even my, where my finger goes. And that is where the blood travels into your body. So that's a pretty big heart, isn't it, compared to mine? Yeah, that's a pretty big one. Now, with these, with these bigger hearts and bigger animals, what do you think, everyone? Do you think the animal's uh, heart rate would be as fast, or what do you think? Would, would it be slower than ours? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what, what do we think on YouTube? YouTube people haven't answered in a while. If you guys have a thought, and anyone wants to type in slower heart rate, faster heart rate for these big animals, both. So how cool to see a cow's heart, Simon. Thank you so much for sharing that. I love the radio, too. That was great. How about... Miss Gurdari, Miss Lafay's class, if you guys want to share in the chat, they think slower. Miss Pino's class thinks slower. They're typing in the chat. Okay. okay, that's one thought. Does anyone think faster? Do we all think slower today? Hmm. Slower, Mr. Fleming. Miss Gurdari, what do you think? Faster. Faster? Okay, we've got a different one. Mainly slower, Miss Gurdari's throwing a wrench in it. We've got a, multiple options here, Simon. Tell us what's going on. So that is really cool because the bigger the animal is usually the slower the heart rate. There's more blood that needs to go into and around the body. So the cow's heart would definitely be slower. Now, I want everyone to try something today. We're going to predict another thing. So we heard my heart. And I wanted you to predict how fast my heart would go. So let me see. So let me show you that right over here. That's me. You can see me right over here. I have my mask on before. So how many times do you think my heart will beat? And then I have my watch right over here, and my watch tells me how much my heart was beating. So you can, you can, uh, everyone make a prediction. Make a prediction. This is when you're trying to make a prediction right over here. Uh, ooh. It, when you're listening to it well, before, it was actually moving pretty quickly, right? It was. It was, it was like a rock song. It was very exciting. Does anyone have any thoughts? Miss Miss Way's class, what do you guys think? How fast? How many times? 30, is still 30. They think 30. thirty beats per minute. Thirty beats per minute. Okay, 30. very fast. <laughs> I wish it was thirty. That'd be amazing. I'd be like a Olympic swimmer, Olympic marathon runner. That'd be amazing. So right now on my watch it says ninety eight. So I'm a little. I think I might be a little nervous in, in front of all of my friends right over here. And then also the liquid nitrogen and the bed of nails. That excites me, but you know what? That That is really interesting because now we are going to ask you to make a prediction about your heart rate. So what do you think your heart rate will be like? So how how many uh, how many times do you think your heart will be in one minute? So you are gonna make your prediction right over here. Make your predictions. Ooh. Okay. By the way, Miss LaFive said 100 for you, so almost spot on, which is pretty impressive for the guests. Oh, oh, that's yeah. amazing. For me, I'm going to guess I'm not that nervous, you know, I, I'm pretty calm. I didn't have a bed of nails today. I haven't had to hold me hearts or cool, like, cryo gloves. So I think I'm going to be at, like, like 75, maybe Miss Pino says 80. What do we think, guys? Everyone in your class, you can throw it a thoughts. Anything you you can leave it right around to the piece of paper because this is a really good prediction in the beginning. And then we are going to do our own observation in just mm -hmm. a moment. Okay. You're going to do your own observation. Yeah. All right. So I hope you all made your predictions. All right, so we're gonna move on and we're gonna find and let's, we're gonna measure your heart rate now. So a really good way to measure your heart rate is just right over here. You can put your two fingers just, it's right almost under your chin area right over here. And just quiet, we're going to feel. Can you feel your heart rate? All right, so we can feel your heart rate. So this is great. I see Jesse is starting to count, but you know what? We are going to prompt this counting. So we're going to do 30 seconds. So you're going to calmly, we're going to take your measurements. All right, everyone at home. So remember, we're going to start counting in three, two, one for 30 seconds. Oh, that's not 30 seconds. Sorry. <laughs> We're going to wait for a little bit. Ah, wait for the 12 to go, and then we're going to count again. Okay, everyone Yeah, ready? we're going to count again. We're going to count again. When it starts at 30, we're counting again, okay? So we're going to start at 30, and then we're going to count again. I'm not sure why it just <laughs> All right.
and stop. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that number and for a minute, you're gonna multiply it by two or you're gonna just add it twice. So you're gonna add, if, if yours says 30, you're gonna add it 30 and 30, so you get 60. And in mine, actually I had about 40. So my watch was close. Uh, I think I'm getting a little bit, you know, I'm getting more comfortable with everyone. I wasn't touching the liquid nitrogen just yet. So my heart rate starts to slow down. And you know what, that's amazing because we're gonna start experimenting and you're gonna be collecting data today. So in your class, what you can do is you can have your friends write down their names and then you can write down the heart rate beside it. But that is the first experiment. We're just gonna experiment with you just standing and just more just sitting by your seat. But you know what, that's not a very fun experiment. What, what do you think? What, what can we, what can we um, uh, compare our heart rate with? So why do you think my heart rate is different from yours and is different from an elephant's heart rate? Why do you think that is? So we're gonna ask that question first and then we're gonna develop our own experiment. Why do you think our heart rate might be so different? Okay, mm -hmm. let's see if anyone wants to share on YouTube. By the way, so great of you guys participating yeah. on YouTube and in the chat by testing your own heart rate. Miss Pino's class, if you want to unmute your mic, I'm curious what you guys think. So why might your heart rate be different than an elephant's? You want to unmute, come on in. What do we think, Miss Pino's class? Let's check. Let's get that mic unmuted. I don't know. Like, oh, way bigger. They're way bigger? Okay, we learned that bigger animals have the slower heart rate. Very good. Okay. Very good. Any other thoughts? Raiden, what do you think? A bigger heart. A bigger heart. Yes, a bigger heart. Very good. What about what about comparing my heart to your my heart rate to your heart? Rate? Okay. How about Miss Way's class? What do we think? Simon's heart to your heart. Why might it be different? What might be different between? He's bigger. He's bigger. He's bigger. <laughs> Huge. Hey, I'm not bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know what? Yes, I'm bigger, and yes, I'm I'm an adult. So as you as you think about it, we are going to start doing that experiment. So you're going to make your own experiment today using your own heart rate, and you're going to take down data uh, throughout this uh, throughout this uh, this experiment. So what can we change? So think about your heart rate. What can you change to affect your heart rate today? Uh, you can think about many different things. So just like how I said before, I was kind of nervous. I was using the liquid nitrogen and all that stuff. So that might change your heart rate. What else do you think can change heart rate? Uh, I can see in the chat, there's a lot happening in there. Uh, so uh, there is, a, yeah, there's definitely a lot that you can change. Uh, what can you, what do you think you can measure? Uh, what do you think you can measure in that heart rate? So maybe you can check, check the check the time, the speed at which your, your, heart's your heart's beating, and then you create your own testable question. So I have an example of a testable question that you can start off with first, and then at, in class, I want you to experiment and try different things while doing this. But then remember your first prediction and then your first measurement, because those things will help you out, help you uh, with your experimenting. The, remember the first measurement that you made, I see some of you are saying 80, 100 from Ms. Pit, uh, Ms. Pitto's class. Uh, that is fantastic. So that is your control because then you take your control and then you're going to actually compare your experiments with it. So let's see. My example of a testable question is I would like to investigate the effects of jumping jacks to the speed of my heart. And you know what, that's something that you can try afterwards as a class. Remember, first measure your initial heart rate and then try your experiment. But then when you do your, when you try your experiment and when you do your experiments, how do you design a fair test? How do you know it is fair? So how many things do you change at once? Hmm, should I change the activity to many different activities? Hmm, should I do, uh, like standing, jumping, and then back down to sitting? Hmm, or should I just try one thing at a time? And what needs to stay the same? So maybe you have to figure out, maybe if my friend is doing it and I'm doing it, is that the same, is that the same experiment? So that is what you think about when you're designing a fair test today. So everyone, I want you after this program, go off and, and test your heart rates with your friends and with your teachers, compare your results, maybe change the experiments up a little bit, maybe try laying down and checking your heart rate, 
Maybe try doing something really, really fun. Maybe try scaring someone to change their heart rates. That is all some very good things to change in your experiment. Now, everyone, if you have any questions at all, you know what, I love questions. If you have any questions at all, and you haven't gotten a chance to ask me today, you can email us at science center, uh, at science at home at osc.on.ca. Uh, and uh, you can also follow us on social media too. Awesome. Simon, this was so much fun, man. What a great time. Honestly, so much engagement for our classes. What an awesome start to kick off our week of wonder. I'm going to leave up that slide for just a minute. We are in our final minutes of our broadcast, but Ms. Pino's class, Ms. Way, Mr. Fleming, Ms. Grudari, thank you so much for participating so much in the chat today. It was awesome to see you guys take part. You guys really got behind the what's your inquiry mindset today. All our folks on YouTube, at least 10 other full classes across Canada and beyond, Welcome in on our epic week of wonder. I'm going to uh, bring down that slide just so you get a better chance to see Simon for a minute. Simon, what a fantastic job. You're such an enthusiastic educator. Kids absolutely love that. That was awesome, man. Um, and yeah, the nice thing with this, so I'm really excited that Simon highlighted science at home at osc.on.ca. If you guys want to share more questions, I'm sure you have so many inquiries that you want to highlight with Simon. Simon's going to be busy for like weeks after this program. So bug him, inundate him with questions. That's what this is all about. Uh, if you guys want to check out more about the Ontario Science Centre, ontariosciencecentre.ca, amazing stuff happening live in person, more great virtual programs, so such a thrill that you guys could join us. And of course, this is part of our Canadian Science Centres Association series as part of Science Literacy Week, all week long programs around Canada. And of course, if you guys want to join us for more programs in the weeks and months to come, exploringbytheseat.com, 40 to 50 live free broadcasts every month. Last week we went to Toucan Rescue Ranch with Sloss. We did crocodiles, we did aliens, we went to the Seychelles, it was a really, really good time. So Simon, is our last message for our kids today joining us live and on YouTube. If they want to go home, become junior scientists, what would you recommend above all else that they do? That is a great question, Jesse. Uh, remember the process that we went through today. We just it started off with just a question. Started off with just a wondering. What would happen if you did this? What would happen if we changed this? And what would, how would that answer our question? So you, you want to think about science as almost a way to ask questions. So thinking about how can I make this even better? Or how can I make this go slower? How can I change my heart rate this way? And just by asking these little questions, you are doing inquiry. You're doing, your, you're doing the scientific method in this case. Um, and if you're interested in, in joining us in What's Your Inquiry, we're offering What's Your Inquiry as a school program for grade threes all the way to grade uh, eights. Uh, and you can book them now. They're, uh, they're, being, they're being booked at this moment and we're booking all the way till December. So if you want to join us with an inquiry process, you can try it with us also. Fantastic. Simon, what a great message to leave on. Again, we can all be scientists at home. It starts really young. You guys really got behind it today, so thank you so, so much. And Simon, what we do at the end of every program, I'm going to bring in all our live classes to say a big thank you and goodbye. So Ms. Way, Ms. Pino, Mr. Fleming, Ms. Grenari, unmute those mics, get ready, get your enthusiastic yells ready. I'm going to bring you all in. We're going to put those earplugs back in, maybe. Bye, have, have a wonderful day, everyone.